Hello everyone, welcome to the course on supply chain digitization. This course is jointly being offered by three of the faculty members from IIM Mumbai. Uh, myself, Professor Priyanka Verma, along with my colleague Professor Sushmita and Professor Deva Prata Das. If you remember in the last uh, session, we have discussed our uh, challenges in the supply chain and that was the inspiration to understand the need of supply chain segmentation. Looking back into the supply chain challenges, we have discussed so many challenges which are affecting your supply chain activities which include demand forecasting, uh, the way the inventory needs to be managed considering the complexity in the supply chain and the changes in the demand requirement from the customer side. Similarly, how the relationship needs to be managed with the suppliers what are the different ways of managing delays in the transportation and logistics, regulatory compliances are there which needs to be followed in supply chain and followed by this there are sustainability and environmental concerns which is a very important requirement in today's time. So companies has to follow all these uh, concerns, all these requirements and accordingly it has to be seen that how these challenges in the supply chain can be managed. So in the last discussion, we have uh, just listed few of the supply chain challenges. This is just a broad list. And of course, depending upon the type of supply chain, which we have seen in our previous sessions, you can recall from our first week discussions that the challenges in the supply chain will keep on changing. Now, what is the solution for managing such challenges from the supply chains? We know that the problem is becoming complex and it is becoming more challenging. So the best way to resolve such problem is to break this problem into smaller parts and to find out some ways of managing uh, these small, smaller challenges. So when we are breaking the bigger problem into smaller problems, we can say in a way that we have some, some uh, simple way of looking into those uh, smaller problems. For that, we can say that we can try to look into our supply chain in a revised way where we can try to segment our supply chain. Now, the question arises that how these uh, segmentation in the supply chain uh, can help us in managing these challenges and parallelly it is also important to understand what is the need of supply chain segmentation. So we can see that there is a link between the challenges in the supply chain and how segmentation in supply chain can help us in managing these supply chain challenges. So for that, let us look into the need of supply chain segmentation. If we consider any supply chain, we can see that the needs of the customer keeps on changing and depending upon the type of product, the type of business or type of sector, there are diverse customer needs which needs to be fulfilled. Similarly, if we start observing the demand patterns, they are never constant, they are never static. They keep on varying, they keep on changing. So we can see that in our uh, requirement for segmentation in supply chain, the one of the reason that we have to keep in mind is that demand pattern is never fixed and it keeps on varying. So that also has to be kept in mind for understanding the need of segmentation. Similarly, the products that are being offered by the companies have got their own characteristics and they are not of similar variety or similar characteristics. So how can we look into the product characteristics to understand the need of supply chain segmentation? Similarly, the other part is about operational efficiency which looks after the processes involved in supply chain. Can it be done in a little different way or can it be clubbed in some groups so that we can have a better way of managing the supply chain. Most importantly in today's time as we all know that the cost reduction is one of the primary 
uh, motto in supply chain where all the approaches are used to see that how the cost of supply chain can be reduced and that is why one of the solution is to see uh, can we apply supply chain segmentation for achieving this purpose. We also know about the risk management because uh, managing such a complex supply chain always involves different types of risk. So, how segmentation uh, can help us in managing risk? In line with that, we have the customer centric approach again specifying the need of supply chain segmentation which will be depending upon the type of customer, how this supply chain tech segmentation is important and knowing that the market dynamics uh, keeps on changing how it can help in adopting to the market dynamics. So, we have seen the broad list which is specifying the need of supply chain segmentation. Let us go into this list one by one into further detail. So, when we look into the first um, need which is on diverse customer needs as you can see from here. We understand that the customers have got diverse needs about the products that they are handling. They have got different expectations from the uh, given uh, products, given supply chains and so on. So, what can be done over here? Here we can try to segment our customers and a very very broad way of segmenting the customer is that we can look uh, into our customers as are they the retail customers or they are some B2B clients. So, if we have a retail type of consumers whose demands are required to be fulfilled, then the supply chain has to be uh, designed in such a way which looks after these uh, personalized requirements of the consumers which can be something like home delivery options and accordingly the whole supply chain network design should be looking after uh, this particular requirement. Whereas, if there is a B2B client where uh, another business is acting as a customer for the uh, where the partner is again a big client. So, for that the requirement is again in large quantities. So, for that purpose you can see that you can uh, the, uh, the prioritization is always on bulk shipments, what are the better ways of uh, providing the shipments in bulk quantities, how the cost can be reduced while shipping bulk quantities, uh, the procurement processes that is in terms of understanding your requirement and streamlining the whole processes is very important because you are handling with the large quantities and so on. So, we can see that if we can uh, have the segmentation of the customers, it will help us in deciding the right strategies for them. So, uh, the solution for this again as we already discussed is to understand the need of the, that particular type of customer whether they are looking for some customized type of services or they are look, looking for the faster delivery or if it is uh, focusing on uh, how you can fulfill your order uh, in a better way. So, what are the strategies for that? So, based on the customer requirement you can design your supply chain, you can manage all the requirements of a supply chain to cater to that particular requirement of the customer. The second need which we are going to trying to cover for supply chain segmentation is we understand that demand pattern is not constant and this keeps on varying. So, demand can vary depending upon uh, different type of markets that uh, from where we are receiving the demand, uh, demand or from the regions or maybe it is uh, linked with a particular type of customer groups. So, we can try to create segments as high demand regions or low demand regions. Just for example, there can be various other ways of creating segments for demand as well, but just for an example, we are trying to create the uh, demand pattern depending upon the, uh, the, the quantity of the demand to be satisfied. So, in case it is a high demand region, the expectation is always that uh, the order is fulfilled on time and in order to ensure that this is achieved, uh, it is important that the product is available and to, 
to look that the product is available over here. We can have strategies in the supply chain which ensures that there are a large amount of inventory available at such regions and also the replenishment cycle should be very fast so that this high demand can be fulfilled and there is no option for stock out and the product is always available. Whereas sometimes we have uh, regions which has got very low demand and at such regions if we are having a large amount of inventory obviously this will add cost to your supply chain. So what should be the strategy for such regions? Typically the best strategy for such region where the demand is very low, it's always advisable to carry smaller stock levels and look after fulfilling the inventory on a just in time basis. It means that as soon as the demand is received, the strategy can be to fulfill it instantly. So in this way, the uh, cost can be uh, saved and the, the way the demand needs to be managed at uh, these two regions can be accordingly planned. So it's very important that we understand the type of the demand, whether it is very high or very low, and in line with that, we can plan for the right amount of inventories to be carried or what type of replenishment cycles can be planned for that. Looking after the solution, if we are having uh, a proper alignment between the demand and the available inventory, this can be easily translated into the production that is required to be done. And the other decision as you all know, which is also linked with the supply chain, that is the distribution can also be accordingly planned. So we can see that just understanding the characteristics of the demand, all the decisions about the supply chain can be accordingly managed. So if you understand the demand characteristics, you can plan your inventory levels, you can plan your production schedules and you can also see that what is the right distribution strategy for your corresponding demand. So we can see that the challenge is what we have discussed in the previous session, how this can be managed by creating supply chain segmentation. Similarly, if you look for the need of supply chain segmentation, we understand that in any supply chain, there are variety of the products which are being offered. Suppose there is a company which is offering a large variety of the product, how do we manage the supply chains for such, uh, for such uh, business? So, it's, if we can have certain characteristics of the product which can help us in understanding the requirement, again this can be better managed. So, we, uh, if you look into the life cycle of the product, this again keeps on changing. Some are new products and some are already established products. So this again, uh, this again uh, help uh, in deciding the type of supply chain which is which can be associated with that. Similarly, looking after the demand volatility or what is some specific requirement related to handling those products. Uh, very very small issues as you can see from here are also uh, playing a good role in deciding the need of segmentation. So if you look into the characteristics of the products, suppose you have got products which are perishable in nature and some are which are durable in nature. It means the perishable goods uh, cannot be carried for a longer duration of the time whereas durable goods have got longer shelf lives. Knowing the perishable goods have got shorter shelf life, it automatically uh, confirms that it has got a very short supply chain maybe uh, something like your uh, bakery items or something like your uh, milk items and so on. So knowing the perishability of the product because they are having shorter supply chains, it requires expedited shipping and if we have digital solutions with the help of which we can track these perishable products, this becomes very easy for managing them. It becomes uh, easy to see their stock levels. It becomes easy to see the requirements and accordingly the planning for fulfilling the demand can be done in a better way. So we can see that how digitalization can be helpful for managing shorter supply chains in case of perishable goods. Similarly, if you have 
Uh, another uh, type of product which have got higher durability means that they have got higher shelf life. Uh, we can say that they can be stored for longer duration and hence the dependency of such products is more on the way the inventory is being managed for them. So, if we have the right inventory management strategy for such products, the uh, supply chains for them obviously have uh, another way of uh, deciding uh, the different strategies for such products we can see from here. Because the products have got uh, higher shelf lives, the transportation again can be selected in such a way which are very cost effective and uh, accordingly this will help you in reducing the overall supply chain cost. So, in, in short what we have discussed about product characteristics that depending upon the type of product the inventory levels can be decided whether to keep lower inventory levels or higher inventory levels. Similarly, whether what type of transportation modes are suitable if it is a perishable goods then uh, uh, quicker transportation modes are favorable whereas for durable goods we can go for cost effective transportation methods or modes and in case of uh, uh, the overall you can say that the focus is ensuring that how the supply chain can be more efficient and more profitable by understanding the product characteristics. Uh, this is another need of supply chain segmentation. The next is about operational efficiency. Now, let us see that what, uh, what is meant by operational efficiency. If we consider any traditional supply chains which are very linear supply chains and which are totally focusing only on cost. So, when a supply chain is trying to minimize the cost, it focuses more on consolidation and seeing that how the same activity can be done at minimal cost. In this process, this supply chain faces lot of inefficiencies and in short, it's the traditional supply chains are unable to consider the unique requirements of the customer. So, that is one very important challenge in the uh, traditional supply chains. But in today's time as we know the uh, situation is not like that people want more and more uh, different uh, types of products, they want more variety in the products. So, if we have the characteristics of the if we have the segmentation of the uh, of, of the uh, products in form of whether the products are standard products or whether the products are customized, the operational efficiencies can accordingly be managed. For example, if a company is making a very standard product where the demand is already stable, some very simple example like salt manufacturing, very standard product is there, there is no not any customization needed, the production is always very continuous and we can have a systematic way of doing the things. This is a very standard process of doing the uh, of manufacturing a standard products. Whereas, when, as soon as we talk about customized products, these type of customized products we know that requires a dedicated production line sometimes and this also gives you the flexibility in your scheduling and having a higher changeover frequency. So, how do we take care of this uh, standard products and customized products to see that the operational efficiency is taken care. So, in this case we can understand that the operational efficiency can be improved if we have uh, the understanding of the specific requirements of the different type of products and accordingly the whole process can be tailored for that particular a type of uh, requirement or for that particular type of products. So, if we have a, a standard products we can have the system designed for that. This will help in reducing the overall lead time and minimizing the waste also as a byproduct as you can see from here. Whereas, if we have the customized product again the given uh, uh, processes can be designed specifically for that particular type of customized products which helps in attaining the requirement for the customer on a quick time basis. The next need is about cost reduction. 
This is one of the most important requirement in supply chain. Uh, the primary objective of all the supply chain is generally to manage the cost and this is equally challenging because we understand that the supply chain is not so simple. It has got huge complexity, a simple reason being that it has got different number of partners located at different places having their different requirements. So if we are trying to reduce our cost, what can be done for looking into this? So suppose we have got two categories of products. There is one uh, category of product which are holding all high value items and there is another category of product which are quite standard products. So something if we talk about any standard product which can be following standard shipping as we already have discussed, we can follow bulk packaging and the logistics associated with it can again be uh, cost efficient. But when we look for the high value products, the high value products are something which have got a very high value associated with this. So obviously it requires some specialized type of packaging. Uh, the, the shipping has to be very safe and that is why some premium type of shipping re is required to be done and all the services which are linked with the high value products needs to be expedited. So we can see that again depending upon the way the products are looked after over here the whole strategy for managing these approach can be accordingly decided which helps us in reducing the cost. So in this process, if we know that given product is the standard product, then all the resources can be accordingly allocated in such a way that any unnecessary cost can be minimized and also it can be looked after uh, the logistics cost which can be uh, minimized and so on. Whereas if it has got a high value products. So here we can have expedited shipping and in this type of products we do not worry about the utilization of the capacity. The more focus is on ensuring about customer satisfaction. The next is about risk management. We understand that because the nature of supply chain is global nowadays, it is getting more and more complex and that is why it is being exposed to different types of risk. So what can we do for the understanding of uh, for looking after risk management and what are the challenges in, in, in this particular category? There are different types of risk to which the supply chains are generally exposed. There are disruptions which can happen due to national reasons or global reasons and which can impact your supply chain in a direct or indirect way and in past we have seen several such examples and accordingly how that has affected several businesses in their uh, everyday in their daily operations. Similarly uh, if there is any natural disaster or there is any geopolitical event or any other factor which affects your supply chain even as even a one even to a one partner in supply chain it affects the whole supply chain performance let us look into this in uh, with a simple example of understanding the components suppose we have got two types of components there is one component which are very critical and is required uh, for completing a given product a very simple example like if we are looking for the semiconductors and it is required for making any type of automobile or any type of electronics. So knowing the criticality which is associated with the component and knowing the possibility of disruptions or other type of risk which affects the supply chain, the best strategy for ensuring that these critical components are always available is by offering a dual sourcing option managing sufficient uh, safety stock or uh, staying in close supplier collaboration. Whereas those components which are not so very critical they, uh, for such components single sourcing can be done and where the flexible arrangements can be easily accommodated. So we can see from here 
that depending upon again the criticality associated with the components which are required for making a particular product, the strategies can be easily tailored to fulfill that particular requirement. Finally, your customer centric approach is uh, another uh, need of supply chain segmentation where the challenge is due to the expectation from the customer's end. Sometimes the customers are looking for the personalized experiences and personalized services which creates a, a reason for us to look into our customer into different ways. So, we, uh, there can be some businesses where there are premium customers and there are standard customers. In case of premium customers, again the options can be done in such a way where uh, exclusive offers and faster shippings can be offered, whereas for the standard customers, they can be uh, offered some standard services uh, with the standard shipping options and so on. So again we can see that depending upon the type of customers, the supply chain can be accordingly tailored which can look after the uh, customer requirements and also it can focus on ensuring that the customer remains loyal uh, with the overall brand perception being carried forward. Talking about adapting to market dynamics, we understand about there are uh, about different factors which affect the economic conditions and the regulatory changes and accordingly they impact the supply chain requirements very much. This can be understood very easily with the help of an example of uh, global south supply chain uh, context where most of the countries in the global south they actually if you see are characterized by low income whereas the population of such countries are quite dense and the infrastructure are generally not so good and often uh, they have got political or cultural uh, marginalization. So, we can see that this is creating a very different need for the companies which are going global and accordingly for them there is a requirement of a very different type of supply chain. This can be translated uh, to make a segment of the market into two form that is emerging markets or mature markets where emerging markets require your supply chains to be quite agile and where the focus is always on ensuring that the demand fluctuations are fulfilled are managed properly and there is a rapid response to these fluctuations whereas mature markets are more suitable for the stable uh, products where there is whole uh, where the focus is completely on ensuring that the cost is efficient. So, looking into the market also will help in managing the supply chains accordingly. So, summarizing whatever we have discussed about the need of supply chain segmentation, let us have a quick look into the different type of segmentation that can be created over here. So, we can see that at different places we have followed different type of segmentation which can fulfill this requirement. So, we can have customer segmentation, we can have product based segmentation, geographic segmentation, channel segmentation and so on. So, when we talk about customer segmentation, your uh, this looks after the requirements of different customer groups like you can have retail customers in one group, wholesale customers in another group and so on. Similarly, products can be customized on different characteristics. There is not one specific characteristics which uh, defines the segmentation for the products depending upon the uh, product uh, requirement or the, the customer requirement these characteristics can be selected. Some characteristics which are quite useful are like demand volatility, shelf life or some specific handling requirement and accordingly the product can be characterized as high value items or fast moving items or so on or slow moving item or perishable items or so on. Similarly, geographic segmentation can also be done where the supply chain can look after the geographical regions or market specific requirements which can be translated into understanding the demand pattern, the regulatory requirement, what type of distribution network will be good and so on. And accordingly, this can help in deciding the type of uh, tailored supply chain strategies which will be useful for it. 
uh, channel segmentation is again another type of segmentation which helps in deciding what uh, in what different channel the products are made available such as direct sales or retailers or e-commerce and so on. As we know that nowadays there are different type of channels available and each channel will uh, obviously have a different type of supply chain will have different type of practices and accordingly a different rec delivery requirements. So, how the supply chains can be tailored to look after this particular uh, requirements. Uh, similarly, we can also segment our supply chains uh, based on value chain, based on demand base or based on inventory base uh, segmentation as well. In value chain, uh, the value added activities can be seen that what value is being added at each stage. For example, we can uh, the companies can try to have different strategies for uh, suppliers or they can have strategies for manufacturers and so on and in each part of the value chain how to, uh, how the business can work or what strategies they can uh, look after it to see that the within the given supply chain the uh, within the given value chain of the supply chain uh, that whole function is getting optimized. Similarly, we have already discussed about demand where type of the uh, demand characteristics can be a seasonality of the demand or maybe variability in the demand and based on that the segmentation can be done. Uh, as we understand that seasonal demand uh, will require a different type of supply chain strategy and this accordingly will depend upon the type of products and the type of uh, demand which is associated with it. And in case of a very steady product which is almost having a constant demand throughout the year, they can be managed with a very efficient supply chain easily. Lastly, when we talk about inventory based segmentation, then it is again here we can apply some inventory characteristics to uh, segment the products which are stored at the different part of the supply chain. Very simple ways of classifying these inventories which are quite popular are like ABC analysis, XYZ analysis, lead time analysis and so on. So, in short in today's session we have seen that how the supply chain challenges that were discussed in the previous session can be managed by looking into the segmentation of the supply chain. But what are the different strategies of the supply chain segmentation which can be applied to manage these challenges. But remember one thing, all the types of segmentation that we have discussed so far is just a very broad list of segmentation. There can be more ways of dividing your supply chain into smaller segments and looking and deciding the strategies for it accordingly. Also in one point of decision, not a single type of segmentation will work alone. It always has to be a combination of the different type of segmentation in such a way that ensure the practitioners to decide about the right type of practices suitable for that particular type of uh, combinations that has been selected. So, it is always a mix of all the segmentation that can be applied on a given supply chain and the combination of it will help the practitioners to decide the right strategy for managing that particular case. So, with this we will end today's session and uh, we hope that we have uh, connected the challenges of the supply chain and how the supply chain segmentation strategies can help us in managing that particular supply chain. Thank you everyone, have a nice day.